In this clip, I answer a question about how you might start a privileged container inside of Docker Swarm. Um, all right, so is there, let's see. Is there a way to run a container in privileged mode with Docker Swarm? I'm experiencing uh, th this particular issue while in Swarm mode on CentOS where SE Linux is enabled. Hmm. Alexandra says sidecar uh, using do native Docker. Um, so no, uh, out of the box, uh, if you're really if you're specifically talking about privilege mode now, privilege mode basically turns off all security in a container. Um, SE Linux is not always compatible with privilege mode, and I'm not sure if that's what you're referencing here. Uh, I can I can't actually. Let me see if I can look up the issue. Um. But I want to. But I'm going to take this opportunity to uh, let's see to talk to you a little bit about different swarm options. So just going to take a look at your issue real quick. So this is the issue you sent me. So uh, let's talk about uh, before. I'm not going to dive into that issue and specifically exactly what that's all about. But let me give you some options, and then you can figure out if those are going to help. And maybe they're already listed because it looks like this is a pretty decent um, log. Obviously, disabling SE Linux is not what we want to do here, right? I mean, SE Linux is one of the great uh, ways to ensure proper security on a Linux system. It's not always the easiest thing to deal with, like all things like app armor, everything else that is a potential security improvement of on Linux. Uh, so the last thing I want to tell you to do is go disable that. Um, which I, so I'm not going to tell you to do that. The goal is to see if you can get around it. Now, privilege mode, uh, essentially, you know, it's, it's tough, right? Because privilege mode disables all the security. So ideally, what you're getting down to is a set of things like uh, capabilities or different security options that you can enable in your container when it's run so that you don't have to uh, run privilege mode because privilege mode is like the it's like the nuke option you know it's just it's it t disables everything and it's usually what you use as a last resort plan because you can't figure out what the security thing that is that's limiting your container and there's lots of things in containers that you can do to uh control containers because when containers run by default there are certain things that automatically get applied like an app armor profile like certain capabilities are removed from it uh, talking to the Linux kernel. So it's probably one of those things that's part of the problem. It might be SE Linux itself, which you can configure. Um, so let's talk about Swarm. Uh, Swarm, let's see, Docker, CE. So if you didn't know, you can get the release notes of each Docker release over on Docker Hub. Um, and here, in the we're we're about to release 1902, and one of the things in Swarm that's coming out a new feature for this version is some security features. So one of them is adding support for sys control options in services. So it, now I don't know what you're trying to run with Portainer and what the specific issue is in Portainer, but if uh, if it's related to something that you can do by opening up sys control options. Now in Swarm, you can do that. So over time, in fact, there's a list. Um, I'm gonna post the, I'm gonna post the releases up while I'm here. And then I'm gonna give you this list. Mm -mm -mm. All right, so there's this huge long standing like three plus year old issue on GitHub. Um yeah. And what it is is it's comparing all the features of Docker run to Swarm and essentially as the Docker team adds functionality to Swarm for a particular feature, it's checking off the things on this list because Docker run had tons of features and when Swarm was released, they weren't going to be able to replicate every single one of those options for Docker run into Swarm. And some of them don't even make sense to run in Swarm. 
Um, so like IT, right? Uh, that makes no sense in Swarm because it's a declarative model. It's not, it's not running, inter- you can't run interactive on something that may be running on a different node, uh, at least not yet. So I'm gonna put this one in here as well for you, this URL, uh, in case you wanna go down this list and look at some of the other options and maybe those will help you debug the security issue. Um, the last thing, which I would do before I uh, just gave up on it and like disabled SE Linux because I wouldn't want you to want to have to do that, is try in my dog versus cat repo. And if you haven't heard me uh, say this before, the dog versus cat repo is essentially uh, a place on Docker Hub or on uh, GitHub, sorry. And I'll put that up there. This is a bunch of my swarm examples. And one of the examples I have in here is how to run a Docker run nested in a swarm service. So it's not technically a container running in a container. It's a container running that then sends a command to the local Docker engine to start up a container. And it seems a little convoluted, but it's a great way to get around the limitations of swarm and it works fine. Uh, There's not a whole lot of issues with doing it this way. And let me see if I can show you an example. So here is a service that I have in a compose file. And in here, I'm essentially installing a plugin, right? So I'm telling it to run the swarm exec image, which has Docker installed and allows me to run a command one time against the host. And it's running, this is how I connect the socket from the host into that swarm service. And then I have it just running a Docker command against the host, that whichever host it's going to run on, right? Now, the, that is, this is so that I can do plugins across the entire swarm. So if you ever needed like a storage driver and you needed to run it on all the nodes across your swarm or even just a certain set of nodes, you can uh, use deploy options down here to constrain it and actually prevent it from running on all nodes if you want. But I have it running in global mode, which means it'll do this on every single node in the cluster and it will do the Docker plugin install for the particular plugin I need. The other example I have here is for the prune command. So a lot of people ask, hey, how does Swarm can auto clean up images on its own? And it doesn't, but there's a great way to do this yourself. And this is a closer example to maybe what you want to do. And that is I'm running the standard Docker image, which means I'm going to be running a Docker command inside a container in Swarm. And I'm running this on every node. And then uh, I'm connecting the Docker socket, which means it will talk to the engine on the host that it's running on. And then it's going to run a shell command that essentially uh, waits a day, runs Docker image prune, and then waits another day and then runs again. So it's always running, but it's mostly in a wait state inside, uh, sleep, a sleep state technically, inside of a Docker container. It's doing nothing until it needs to run that command. So in this way, you could change this and your command would be the docker run command dash dash privileged for whatever container you need to run. Now, this uh, this still, as long as you start to, to behave a little uh, differently where you make sure that your container properly shuts down when it's supposed to, this will work. And it doesn't, it's not a horrible solution. It's I think it's a better solution than disabling SE Linux because it doesn't lower your security. But honestly, at the end of the day, I would try to get rid of the dash dash privileged. I would try to see what it is about this container that it needs on the host. And uh, I would go looking for that option in Docker run because the privilege mode really just turns everything off. So I'm always trying to figure out how to not use that. But great question. Thanks for watching. Click the subscribe and the notification bell down there will let you know when I go live every week to take your questions on Docker and DevOps. You can watch these videos over here or you can just go watch those cat videos you've been meaning to watch.